Hey guys, time for a quick game theory video, quick. All right, quotation marks. Remember, if you like the videos, like, sub, silly, comment, share, support the channel if you want. Because you know the haters are in full force. Look at those motherfuckers pretending that they're dying. They're so mad that I did so much in this game recently. Go look at that. That's fucking, it's disgusting actually, right? But anyway, so you know, there's recently this topic again about pay to play, right? Because there's even like discussion about this character being banned that she's so good, right? You know, she's so good that the game has become pay to play, pay to win, whatever it is. And my argument would be for that, half this game is pay to play. Maybe years and years ago when DLC was more random or something like that. Let's say something like, I don't remember exactly how old the game is. Is the game like 10 years old or 12 years old? I don't remember exactly. Say a game like Marvel, whatever it might be, right? Um, Marvel 3, you know, I think it was only Shuma Gorath and like Jill was the only DLC characters in that. There were DLC or pay to play in that game or something like that. But nowadays in video games, look at this game. What, what? DLC, 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 right? DLC, uh, DLC, 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 uh, DLC. DLC, 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 uh, DLC, uh, DLC, DLC. And, and you, do you know what? The majority, I think, of those characters that are DLC have been considered good in the meta, or if not, top tier at one point or another. Half the game is pay to play. Does it suck that maybe now she is, you know, I mean, I don't want to give my total opinion on her, right? But is she the best character in the game outright? You know, whatever. You know, who knows, right? I mean, that seems to be the opinion. I would argue, is she so good that she break, you know, uh, what is broken and what isn't broken, truly broken? What makes something in a, in a video game truly broken is kind of an iffy uh, topic, I think, not just like a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think there's anything wrong with the character being good either, right? But I think when your argument is this character, this game has become pay-to-play, half the game is pay-to-play. Context is king. That argument makes no sense. That is just the nature of what video games have become. DLC is so rampant in video games in the first place now. Right? So when people argue that, I don't think your argument is fair. And so then your argument has to legitimately be, is this character so broken that she automatically wins? And especially when you're thinking about a game as being a tag team game, your argument becomes even more sketchy, I think, right? Now you could argue what I've said before, I think it's better... If you're going to have a character that is good in a video game, I think it's better when a character... Because inevitably, a, a character is going to be good in a video game, right? That's just how the nature of video games. Someone's going to be better than someone else, right? But I would always say it's better to err on the side of a character that shows off the game well, or at least there is a story behind when a character is good. Because when there is a narrative to why a character is good... It works in every aspect. It can even teach the casual audience who is getting into the game something about the game. That's why I say a game like Super Turbo always has such a great narrative because even if you look at a character like Old Sagat and Belrog, who are both very powerful and the meta of the game, what a perfect storyline. You have the old school player who appreciates Fireball Dragon Punch Trap. Sagat, and he's very he's a very easily digestible character. So someone just getting into Super Turbo, that's a very easily digestible character that knows what they're getting into. Then you have a character that is such a totally different aspect, Balrog. Balrog rushing you down. He's powerful with supers. He has throw loops. He's super turbo. You know, he has like one of the best supers in the game. If, you know, arguably probably the best super in the game, some would say. That's a great narrative. When you have two distinct characters that are both very powerful in the meta and are both very easy to see why they are powerful, what a perfect, a perfect storyline for your fucking video game.
That's amazing. Now, I would argue that Android 21 is not that interesting narrative-wise. The only interesting narrative aspect she has of the game is the 21 debuff, which I think is cute. You know, it's like kind of cheeky, whatever. You know what I mean? It's kind of cute, I guess, whatever. But I mean, from a narrative perspective, that is interesting, I think, on all levels. I think that is interesting to a casual gamer, and that is interesting to a more, you know, competitive gamer, I think, right? That's why I said, you know what I mean? When people are complaining that Ultra Instinct Goku is good, man, that's fucking awesome. Him being able to walk through fireballs, having all these kind of weird mechanics that show off the game. Ultra Instinct, when all, if Ultra Instinct, if the worst thing you could say about this game is that Ultra Instinct is one of the best characters in the game, that's not a bad argument to have because he shows off the game potentially very well. He actually has gimmicks of the game. And he potentially, if you were to make the game even better, so to speak, more more zoning and all this kind of stuff, he would have even more chances to shine to show off those kind of gimmicks. That's not a bad narrative for the casual gamer or the more competitive gamer. Just like I've talked about narrative, Vegito is actually serendipitously a potentially very interesting character narrative-wise if, you know, you fiddle with the mechanics a little bit because he's very foundationally interesting, right? Krillin... Not as in the meta of the game per se, but with some tweaking, Krillin, Krillin is a character I've said, man, he is potentially a very easily digestible character that is interesting to a casual audience and a more competitive audience. Very easy to understand why Krillin could be a very interesting character in this game because of the way the mechanics work, right? So anyway, that you know, I always talk about narrative of video games, and I know it's some something that people don't really appreciate. You, you got to remember, people, just like a sports team, people or a person has their favorite player in a sport, people have their favorite team or character that they're rooting for in a video game. There's different ideas of how a character is played that a person, they want to root for that character. I want this character to be good. I want this character to be good. There is a narrative of that, in a sense, in a video game. So again, a character being good is not bad. If anything, I think it's even better when the character is narratively interesting. Right? That is the knock I would say on 21. Is she totally broken? Does she make the game so unplayable? In a tag team game, it's even harder to argue that when there's two other factors to your team, I would say. Is she the best character in the game? Maybe. There's always going to be a better character than the other. But is she pay to win, pay to play? I think when half the cast, you can't. I think when half the game is not even available to you unless you pay to pay for it, I don't think that argument works. That's just the nature of video games. Anyway, remember if you like the videos, like, sub, silly, comment, share, support the channel if you want. I appreciate it. Thanks.